Sometimes life is messy. Have you ever wished you could refocus your mind, home, relationships, and work life? Join us as we use research-based information to make practical changes and simplify life. This is Life Simplified. Welcome to Life Simplified. Summer break is quickly ending, and that means back-to-school preparations are in full swing. All month long, we will be discussing back-to-school tips to make things go as smoothly as possible. Today, we're going to kick off by discussing back-to-school worry or back-to-school anxiety. All right, ladies. So when I was prepping for this episode, I found an article that was put out by West Virginia University Extension, and I thought it would be a good foundation for our discussion today. The article is written in a question and answer format, a lot like what we do here on the Life Simplified podcast. So I thought we would just kind of go question by question as the article does and discuss our thoughts and then discuss what West Virginia University Extension says about that question as well. But before I dig into the article, I wanted to start with a question just for us. And that is, I want you to think back to your school days. Did you or your siblings ever experience back to school anxiety? I don't remember this so much in elementary But middle school, a little bit. And then I vividly remember my freshman year of high school. And it lasted the majority of the year. My stomach would hurt. I just didn't want to go or if I had to go. So I just, I would get there so early so that I could find a place to hang Mm -hmm. out until school started. And then you get into school and everything is going. But just the the getting there, Mm -hmm. I need a place to be before it started really tore me up for some reason. I can remember some, I think for me, it was more of the transitions into the different levels. So from like elementary to middle school, it's like, oh, we get lockers. Am I going to remember my my code or am I going to be able to get into it or what, you know, what are the teachers going to be like, or who's going to be in my class? Like, you know, that mattered, but it did. And, you know, to me and then, and then again, like actually like the transition into high school, that was a lot because our elementary and high school was kind of one building. And then when you went into high school, it was completely didn't, different. You didn't know where things were and just trying to locate things and know where to go or sit, especially at lunch or right before school and things like that. That's what I, I can remember. Yeah, so I can relate to both of those things. Um, Definitely those major transitions when you're going into a new school building, a new level. For me, I think, honestly, every single year, the first day of school was a source of like great worry or anxiety for me. Um, And I liked school and I, I generally enjoyed going to school, but I always was super nervous the first day. And I think it was kind of like you all said, those unknowns, like who's going to be in my class? Am I going to remember where my classroom is or where I'm supposed to be? And I'd forgotten about the locker combination, but yes, definitely one of those things you're like, I've had it memorized for months, but all of a sudden it's going to leave my brain and I'm not going to be able to get my books and supplies and homework. So there was definitely a level of nervousness for me going into new school years. And to the point where I would make myself physically ill. Like I can remember like stomach aches. Um, There was one morning I can vividly remember that I made myself literally get sick um, to the point where my parents were like, is something wrong with you? Or, but it was, it was just that I was very nervous for that first day. And to see how that would go and who would be in the class and all of those things. So I think as we can see, all three of us had some experience with that. So back to school nerves uh, is definitely something that I think is very real and that most everyone experiences at one level or another. So let's jump into this article and kind of see what it says and what we think about it. The first question in the article is, lots of children resist going to school. How can parents recognize true anxiety? And I think that's something we'll touch on a lot today um, is what is the difference between worry and nerves and then um, actual mental health condition of anxiety? And so hopefully we'll be able to kind of unpack that a little bit as we go on today. So 
for you all, are there any certain things that you pick up on that you would say would be a sign that there's anxiety going on with, with a child? I would think if it's consistent and Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't end once the school day starts or it doesn't end once that first week is over, you know, just after that transition period Mm -hmm. is over, it continues. Yeah, absolutely. I think that definitely hits on to something that we just discussed in this article, but also something um, that if you'll remember back to May when we did our mental health awareness month, kind of mental health basics, I shared a little bit about part of that, um, knowing if something is a mental health condition is paying attention to severity of symptoms and duration. You know, how severe are these symptoms and how long have they been going on? So you're definitely hitting on something there. It's not a one-time thing or just a a short amount of time, but something that really persists um, over a long term. And so the article says that for younger children, it can be really normal for them to feel anxious about going to school, particularly their, their first time going to school, because separating from their parents and their routine that they've had their whole life can be a little little bit scary for them. They're doing something different. It's out of the ordinary. And even if your child has gone to a daycare um, or a babysitter, that's been the routine and they've been used to that. So just like we got a little more um, nervous when we went from elementary to middle and middle to high, they will get a little bit more nervous as well their first time going into a school setting, even if they've been around other students and teachers. But typically, those fears will subside within a very short period of time as the child adjusts to their new routine and their new setting. They make new friends um, and they meet teachers. Some things that you'll want to pay attention to as far as some other signs and symptoms is you want to pay attention to your child's physical, emotional, and behavior symptoms. So physically, we've both kind of mentioned that Ashley and I, and I think maybe even Amanda, we mentioned upset stomachs. Like that's one of those kind of really telltale um, physical symptoms. Also headaches. Um, If your child doesn't typically have headaches, they're starting to have more of those. That could be a sign that they might have some, some fears or anxiety, emotional symptoms. We know fear that that's kind of the obvious one, Um, but also it could be that they're maybe more easily angered or they're having more outbursts or they may become more withdrawn and kind of stay to themselves, isolate a little bit. And so the anger and the withdrawal, that can be more common with older kids or teens, um, whereas you might see more of the fear or apprehension with the little ones. Um, But any of them can experience those symptoms. And then behaviorally, you might find that your child's becoming a little more clingy. Maybe they were more independent and and weren't kind of like on your side, but now as it's getting closer to time for them to go to school, or if they've recently started school, they may be a little more attached uh, and a little more leery of being away from mom or dad or their caregiver. And it may even affect their routines like sleep. They might want to come into the parents' room and sleep with them. And so some of those different behavioral issues and things that they would normally not be doing, you might start seeing. What causes school anxiety? So we discussed a little bit about what causes um, school anxiety for us. For me, it was just the unknown. Anything that the two of you want to add as well? I know we kind of hit on it a little bit. I think some are afraid that they're not going to make friends and mm-hmm. or are their friends still going to be there? Is everybody going to be nice or things like that? Relationship mm-hmm. worries. I think maybe sometimes um, maybe teachers cause anxiety. Prob- I mean, not saying that teachers would do anything to purposely cause anxiety, but maybe it's just a, a new teaching style or, you know, something different and the kids aren't used to it and, or maybe, and everyone learns differently. And we know that, um, I'm a visual learner. So I remember, um, going into those classes where I didn't have that type of learning environment and it made me nervous because I struggled and mm-hmm. things like that. And that makes anxiety, I think as well, prob- for kids. Yeah, I think, you know, that anxiety of like, I need to perform, I need to um, be able to get a certain grade or to do do so well in this class, Uh, maybe expectations kind of can set us up for a little bit of anxiety as well. Yeah, I think those are all good examples. In the article, they kind of break it up into like young children, we kind of already discussed, but 
for them, anxiety is simply about separation from their parents and from their their typical routine. Um, and then maybe fear of meeting new peers and having those new experiences. Whereas kids who have already been in school, there are a variety of other reasons why they may have some school anxiety. And so those are things like being bullied or teased. And so that could either be the fear of that or that maybe they've actually experienced that. And so now they're wanting to protect themselves by not wanting to go. And all of a sudden, this doesn't feel like a safe space for me. I'm not comfortable there. Um, I'm fearful of what's going to be said or done to me again, um, if that's something I've already experienced. Also negative experiences in the classroom. And I think that I could go back, Amanda, to what you were saying. You know, if I can't learn the way that the teacher is teaching, if it's not my learning style and I'm had a ne negative experience because I feel like I've been called out because I didn't know an answer or, or I, I was having difficulty with a certain subject, then that could cause some anxiety and fears with going into school. Also things like not having the latest clothing trends or brands. And I don't know about you all, but I can remember that being a huge stressor, particularly once I got to middle school. I don't think I even knew what brands or trends really were in elementary school, but you get to middle school and your peers will tell you very quickly if your shoes are not the coolest shoes and if your clothes are not the style that is in at that point. So I don't know that I would have thought about that now as an adult because I'm so far removed from that. But but wow, I think that's for as a parent, that's eye opening to me because I know a lot of times we are really hesitant um, to buy certain things. Um, and I certainly don't think anyone should spend outside their means for a certain brand or if it's something that is an inappropriate cut or style. But I do think we have to consider, like, how can we help our child to feel like they're fitting in in an appropriate way when it comes to clothing? Another thing could be maybe they've lost something important. Maybe they've lost their papers or their books or they didn't complete their homework assignment. And so they have fear of the consequences of that. I know that I've also experienced the not being prepared and being a little bit nervous because there's some teachers you knew you could get away with it and some teachers you knew were going to call you out. And that could uh, get a little bit, a little bit scary at times. Here's a big one that I think I have to be very cognizant of as a parent is pressure to achieve and specifically from parents. And I think, I don't know, what are y'all's thoughts on that one? That one kind of hit me like, oh, I need to really pay attention to that. Like for me, because I know I do like really want to encourage especially my my oldest child who's going into high school this year I'm very big on like oh the K you're going into high school you know everything you do is important and now I'm like oh my gosh I'm probably putting a lot of pressure on and so I think it's finding that fine line of um, encouraging but not terrifying and so I don't know if you're anything like me and you you know that your child can achieve a certain level and you're really trying to encourage it, be careful that your encouragement is encouraging and and not setting them up to feel too much pressure um, where they're going to just kind of retreat from all of that. I agree with that very much. I have really tried to not put pressure. Are you mm -hmm. learning what you need to learn? Are you, do you feel like you understand the material that's being taught and not put that focus on grades. And that's been really hard for me. I, I'm a perfectionist. So when I was really hard on myself, when I did not meet these certain goals, so I'm really trying not to put that perfectionism pressure on either one of our girls. The, the oldest has graduated high school. She's in college trying to figure out what she is going to do there. And we talked I came into her life when she was in middle school. So, you know, I talked to her about my high school experience and the goals that I had set and that I wanted to get scholarships and that these things are possible and you can do this if that's something that you're interested in without trying to put that pressure on her. And I think she would say that I did not pressure her in any way, that I was more encouraging. So I really, really have to work on that with the youngest because I have come into her life earlier and starting at a younger age and really trying not to put that pressure on her in the fifth grade that these are what your grades should look like. I'm really trying not to focus on the grades so much as learning. I think I like how you all mentioned and 
kind of alluded to that every kid's different and that you have to be mindful of that because um, growing up, my sister was, I've had all A's and I, you know, and I, and I was just like, I'm going to school to make friends and I'm just here to, you know, do <laughs> so whatever. Sure. So we were totally different. And I remember my parents sent me down and being like, look, I, ha- I think it was like a C or something. They were like, you need to be at at least a B like, and they say, and they saw their expectations weren't, I had to have straight A's just like my sister. Um, they were different and they knew that our personalities were different, but I think that's something to remember that not only like what's different for us, you know, and how you grew up and experienced it, but just that your kids have different personalities too. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I love that point. Cause you know, I have three kids and they are vastly different and school comes very differently for all three of them. And I have to be mindful too, because my oldest and I are very similar learners and things come to us in a certain way that it doesn't for my middle child. And so I'm trying to be very aware um, that she learns differently and that expectations need to be different. And my thing is like, I want you to do what's best for you. I want you to do your best, not your brother's best, not somebody else's best, not my best. I want you to do what's best for you. And I, I want you to enjoy it. And I think that's part of what this is. What what they're saying here is like, be careful that you're not pressuring your child to achieve to the point that they not only don't like school, but they're terrified of going, you mm-hmm. know, and I think we can accidentally do that with intentions that we just want to, you know, encourage our child to do their best, but really are knowing that they should still enjoy it. Like, kind of like you said, like, I'm here to have fun. I'm, I'm here to be social. And I think that's really valuable. And we don't put value on that like we should. So I'm, I'm going to tell on myself for a little bit because I feel like, why not? Let's be a little transparent here. So my oldest is going to be a freshman and he starts school in two weeks. Oh, I cannot believe that two weeks. And I'm not ready for a freshman, but he's going and we're going to do this. Um, And so I got an email literally like four days ago from the guidance counselor at his school. And they're like, yeah, he signed up for an elective for extra PE, but he already gets PE. And like, apparently all the boys freshman year signed up for extra PE. And they're like, yeah, you can't do that. We're going to take that away as an option now. So they're like, if we don't hear from you, we're just going to stick them all in study hall and they don't get credit for study hall. And I'm like, "Uh, I don't know about that. So I'm like, all right, son, what did you sign up for? And he was like extra PE and study hall because they had to pick two different things. And I was like, yeah, I think we're going to not do that. I think we're going to do academic team and ACT prep. And he was like, no, mom, just no. And I was like, yeah, you really need to do that. And he's like, well, I'll do ACT prep. But I am not doing academic team. Put me in weightlifting, put me in weightlifting. And I'm like, what weightlifting? Really? Come on. Like, I don't know about that people. So we went back and forth. And then I, I you know, I talked to the husband about it as well. And he, you know, he was kind of caught in the crosshairs because he could see both where both of us are coming from. <laughs> and he was like, well, who just wants to hang with his boys? And I was like, I know, but college is around the court. Yeah, I got real, you know, high horsey and it was not cute um, at all. And so I slept on it. And after, you know, much consideration, I decided, you know what, like, he's a good kid. He makes good grades. He's doing the things and I want him to enjoy high school. Like, I feel like high school is the time of your life that you're going to look back on and you're either going to say, wow, I had some good times. That was some good memories or, oh, that was a real big struggle. And I want him to have the best experience he can have. So I decided that I would email the guidance counselor and say, okay, here, here is my struggle. Does he have to do the academic team elective if he's going to be on academic team? Because he has done that since fourth grade and that's something he wants to continue. Or is he a- allowed to just do it, be part of the academic team, but he doesn't have to take the elective? If that's the case, then he would like to do weightlifting. And then I was like, but I would like for him to be switched out of study hall into ACT prep. And he's, he was okay with that. He's like, I'm okay with ACT prep, but I'm not doing that academic team. So she wrote me back and he is allowed to do academic team without being the class. So he got weightlifting. And then she told me he was the only student signed up for ACT prep and asked me if I wanted to leave him in there. And I was like, you know what? He can go back to study hall. It'll be fine. So 
I let the child stay in weightlifting and stay. So all of that to say, parents, pick your battles. Just pick your battles. Well, I think you made a good point that you said you slept on it. Yeah, I did. did. Yes. Yeah. I was so ready to email on Friday and be like, he's going to do all the things. And then I slept on it and I actually didn't email her until Monday morning. So I actually slept on it all weekend because I had time to do so. But I think sometimes we do have to take a step back and realize like I have goals for you, but if it's not your goal and it's going to make you miserable, then I don't know that we're making any progress. So I think we took a little detour there, but it felt like, you know, hey, we're all real. But I I do hope that maybe that will, he'll have great memories and weightlifting. A couple other things that may be causes of anxiety for older kids or teens could be embarrassment of lack of athletic ability. Um, you know, maybe they don't like being on the playground if they're younger. Or they don't like go- being in PE if they're older and that makes them uncomfortable. So maybe you find on that particular day of the week, they don't want to go to school or they feel like a little more apprehensive about it. Or another one that is not school related at all, but can definitely affect the way um, kids are feeling about school and in school is if there are significant family problems or changes at home. You know, if you have something big going on in your household, you may think it's not affecting your child, but it very well could be. And that could be playing a role in some anxiety that they have about going to school. So we'll move on to our next question, and that is what can parents do to help prevent school anxiety? What are some ideas that you all have on ways that parents can help to prevent school anxiety? So what about just talking about it, preparing as maybe a month in advance or, you know, whatever it is, two weeks in advance, whatever works best for you. Just talk about what's going to happen, especially if they're transitioning to a different school. You know, who's, are they going to ride the bus or are you going to take them? Like what their days are going to look like and things like that, which I know we've mentioned schedules before and um, more, I think, of the sleeping, trying to get them up into school, (laughs) but uh, maybe just what, what that's, what it's going to look like when school starts. Absolutely. I think that's a great point. And some schools, depending on what the transition is, but if they have an open house, they may even do a walk through your schedule, go see where you're supposed to go. And I want to say that we did that with my oldest for freshman orientation. We got the schedule and we're able to go through it for any kind of transition. Just if there's an opportunity to go to that school and meet a principal or meet a teacher, that could be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I think y'all are spot on. It's that prevention is key. And I think prevention, part of that is preparation and kind of if we can lessen the unknowns, because we said a lot of time you know, that anxiety comes around what I'm not sure about. I don't know where my classroom is. I don't know who's in my class or who my teacher is or where the restroom is or where my locker, all of those what ifs, where are, I'm not sure. Going in ahead of time, meeting the teacher, like you all said, seeing what other students in your classroom, seeing where the classroom is and touring the school and kind of seeing what a normal day is going to look like can really, really help. And and I think you're right, Ashley. Most schools do have open houses. Um, they may call it an orientation, but I know at my kids' school, they, they do. They have a orientation and it's mandatory that you come in and that way you can uh, meet your teachers, you get to see who's in your class, you get your schedule and get to walk it. And you have to visit every classroom before you leave. Matter of fact, I think they have to like sign a sheet of paper and then get their syllabus, especially for the middle and high school, not elementary, they'll just go to their homeroom teacher's class. But I think those things, while sometimes as parents we're like, oh, another thing we have to go to, another commitment, and is this really necessary? Well, it might not be for us, but it could make or break your child's confidence in starting that new school year or that new school or that new situation. And so I think it's definitely important to take the time out to do that. But another big key too is not just preparing them, but your attitude. Parents' attitude is one of the biggest things that we can do to help prevent school anxiety. The messages that we send about school can really make a difference in making our kids feel more comfortable about going to school. 
So you want to prepare your child with positive messages about school. You know, this is going to be fun. You're going to meet new friends. You're going to learn new things. You're going to get to do all these wonderful things. If we're positive about it, they're going to tend to be more positive about it. We also have to let them know that school's not optional. You know, that you can be you can be mad at me, you can you can whine, you can throw a fit, but we're still going to have to go to school. This is something that, that you have to do, and we're going to participate in this. And we can talk through while you're feeling a little bit nervous about it, but at the end of the day, you do, in fact, have to go to school. So we want them to know that's not an option, because um, if they think it is, that might be the option that they really try to take. Develop a goodbye routine. And I think this is so cute. So especially for kids, they're going to school for the first time. What kind of little special routine can you develop with your child so it makes them feel good and comfortable each morning as you're getting ready um, for school or dropping them, them off at school? And I wonder, do any of you all have any, like, have you had any little routines like that? I know, Amanda, yours is in, in daycare right now, but this is a similar idea. Yeah, I'm trying to think. We always, so we, first day of school, we we take the picture because you're supposed to. Yeah, take the picture. It's not the first day. If that doesn't happen. My kids have been at the same school for several years now, so they're fairly comfortable at this point um, with the school itself. But I can remember when they were um, littler, there was one preschool that one of my kids went to, and they had the the parents, uh, particularly, specifically the moms, but it could have been a dad, I guess. Um, they had us put lipstick on and ba- make a kiss. And then they like cut out a hand shape and they laminate it with the mom's kiss on the hand. So like if they got to missing their mom that day, they could get a kiss from their mom, like on the little hand, which I think, you know, it, it sounds silly, but I think for a three or four or five year old, it can be really comforting or maybe even like, having a little picture or something of them together. So if they're they're feeling sad or lonely, they can see that. So having a goodbye routine can be something that's that's really helpful. On the first, we have a first day of school routine. Both my husband and I make sure that we are there when it's time to leave. And we both take our child to school or take our youngest to school. Our oldest has kind of grown out of that routine, but that's she really enjoys that and she will ask once it gets closer to time to go to school are you and daddy both taking me so So that's important to her and that makes a difference see and that and that's all that matters what's important to them like if it's something that's meaningful for them it's going to make them more comfortable Um, another thing that you can do to kind of prepare your child is reading books about school and this is something I've done with each of my children particularly when they were getting ready to go to kindergarten we have the little kindergarten books and we would read about the first day and we've got several different ones with different recognizable characters but I think if you start those a, a few weeks out then they get really excited about going to school and that can make it a little bit easier because there's still going to be some nerves but I think if they can read those stories it helps kind of get them in that frame of mind that, that this is something that's going to be good this is going to be fun and I'm going to enjoy it Another thing you can do to kind of lead up is encouraging more independence, you know, encourage your child to do things on their own that maybe they haven't been doing. So like if it's a young child, um, having them dress themselves or even maybe um, giving them options to pick out their own outfit. Um, What I find is maybe laying out two or three outfits and then letting them choose which one they want. So they're picking, but we still know that it's going to be school appropriate and something that mom and dad are okay with them going to school in. Also, if you have like a older child or teen, maybe getting them ready to start doing their own wake up routine by setting their own alarm and getting used to getting themselves out of bed and getting started with the day. Um, that really helps to build that independence and get them ready for for being away from mom and dad and, and doing things on their own a little bit more. And then rewarding positive progress towards that independence. And so for th- with a younger child, it could be a sticker chart, you know, um, kids love stickers. And I mean, who doesn't? I still love stickers too, but sticker charts seem to work for things like that or a special treat after you earn so many stickers or maybe for an older child or teen, it could be earning extra screen time um, either on television or an iPad or whatever it is that they tend to use um, for screen time. There are several things that parents can do to help, but just remembering that positive attitude. If you remember nothing else, positive attitude will make a huge, huge difference. I think that positive attitude might be harder if you did not have a good experience 
Mm-hmm, definitely. And that's a that's a perfect segue to the next question from the article, which is, do parents ever trigger school anxiety? And the answer is absolutely, because we know that worrying is contagious. Just like you say, you know, like negativity is contagious or positivity is contagious. A lot of times all we get those things from the people around and parents definitely influence their children. And so there are some tips from the article that we'll go over to discuss maybe how we can work on not passing off our anxieties or our worries onto our children. And I like the way the article says it. They say to avoid infecting your child with your own worries, here are some things you can do. And we certainly don't want to infect our children with our worries for sure. So first of all, don't hover when you drop your child off at school. And I think what a great idea. Um, because think about it. If you're hovering, why are you hovering? Are you hovering because because your child needs you or because you're afraid that your child's going to need you? Probably the second option. So don't hover, you know, drop them off, make sure that they're with the teacher or the class they need to be with, and then get out. Because I think the longer we hang out, they pick up on that and they're like, oh, something must not be wrong right here. I should be nervous too, because mom's nervous. She's not leaving. And I think sometimes if we just get out and get out of the way, then they do a better job of connecting and just moving on with their day and flowing a little bit easier. So try not to hover, try, try to kind of let them Go on. Remember, we want to encourage that independence. I feel like you're stepping on my toes. (laughs) Not school, but hey, we're better at it. We take our son to the nursery at church. And so when we first started dropping him off, we were just like standing at the door. Like, is he going (laughs) to cry? And then the the people at the nursery just kind of like, okay, see ya. And close the door. (laughs) They're like, get out. He's fine. He's fine. But now we... And when we walk in the door, we let, we put him down and let him walk himself into the nursery. So he kind of, it's him being excited and going to it. And then we run away quickly. Um, But (laughs) I mean, he's, and I get that, you know, it's as being a first time young mom, you know, that worry of, are they going to need something? Are they going to be upset? Do I need to be there feeling? So yes, I I can Mm -hmm. recognize that. But yes, I'm, so I'm working on it now. So maybe when he goes to school, it won't be so bad. Yeah, I can I can understand that um, every year our school, the first day of school, they'll let you walk your kids to their classroom. And after that, they're like, don't get out of your car. Just let them go. And so I will always ask, like, do you want me to go in with you? And my kids are almost always like, um, no, do not go in. We're fine. And even my youngest. And he was like, I mean, mom, I still love you, but I'm good. And, and OK, and this child is like. This was first grade, okay? He's like, I'm good, but bye. I love that he reassured you that he still loved you. I still love you, but get out of here. Yeah, we've all felt that, Amanda. Don't worry about it. Another one, and this is a huge key, and I would say that this is important for a lot of things. So we can use this advice in many areas of our life. Talk to other adults about your worries and get their perspective. Do not share your worries or unload your worries with your child. Our child is not our therapist. (laughs) Our child is not our peer or our equal. They're our child. And if we start unloading all of our worries and concerns, they are going to take that on it on and own it as their own. And so talk to your spouse, talk to your friend, even like talk to a coworker, someone else that you trust that has some experience and can maybe give you some feedback in that area. But try really hard to not unload that either to your child or in front of your child, because even if you're not talking to them, if they are in the room, they're going to pick up on what you're saying and they're going to start kind of absorbing that information and taking it on as their own. So we want to be mindful of that. Another thing you can do to kind of decrease your own worry is get to know your child's teacher. You know, get to know them, reach out to them, introduce yourself to them, go to that open house or orientation, uh, maybe volunteer in the classroom so that you can see how things are going and that can lessen your anxieties. But know when it's time to leave. Don't just volunteer in the classroom because again, I want to hover and my fears feel better if I'm in there. Make sure that it's not detrimental to your child that you're volunteering. You know, get in there just enough that you feel comfortable, but then get out when it's time for you to step away. 
And then find a way to keep an upbeat and positive attitude. Even if you're not feeling that way, trying to do that for your child's sake will make a huge difference in their experience in school and how they feel with their teacher and their classmates. We've had a great discussion today. We're going to go ahead and pause here. We have more to discuss on back to school anxiety, so stay tuned next week for part two as we discuss even more ways to help our children feel comfortable with school, how to handle it if your child says they are sick and want to stay home, and when you should seek professional help for your child's anxiety. Thanks for listening. This is Life Simplified. Thanks for listening to Life Simplified. We are family and consumer sciences agents with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Contact us at lifesimplifiedpodcast at gmail.com.